This is our 4x4 Overland Truck Camper. My name is Joe from We're the Russos, and today I am going to give you a full walkthrough of our pop up truck camper. This video is sponsored by Four Wheel Pop Up Campers. When we built our Overland truck camper, we decided to go with a 2000 Ford F350. 4 by 4 with the 7.3 liter diesel engine, if you didn't notice by our license plate. The reason we decided to go with a one ton truck for this setup is because we wanted the capacity to not only carry the camper, but also all of the things we bring with us because we are living out of this full time. We decided to go with the crew cab option because of the extra storage this would afford us. In the back, right now we're using this as a hanging closet as well as a storage area. We're talking about at some point removing the back seat and using this as more of a dedicated storage area, but we can still bring three more people in the back if we got rid of all the stuff in there. Now we are going to be producing a video all about the mods and changes we've made to this truck, so stay tuned for that. But now, let's go into camper and take a look around. One thing I like, there's a latch to hold the door open. This is really handy when it's windy outside so this door doesn't get slammed on you. We have our scissor steps that clip right into the camper themselves. And here we are. This is a four wheel pop-up campers Hawk flatbed model. This is a, as the name suggests, a flatbed camper that sits on top of a Norweld all aluminum tray. We decided to go with this option because it affords us a lot more room inside as opposed to some of the slide-in campers because you don't have to worry about the sides of a truck bed, wheel wells, or anything else. As you saw, I could walk right in the side entry. There's a lot more storage that we'll get into, but let's start with the bed. The bed in here is a residential sized full. Actually, it's a little bit bigger than that. Standard, these come with a queen size extension that you actually pull out. It rests on both of these rails, but we decided to opt out of that because this bed is more than big enough for the two of us. That said, they also offer an option for a king bed, which comes out to about here. And for those who are taller or you don't want to crawl over your significant other when you get up to use the restroom in the middle of the night, you can actually sleep front to back with that king option. Now, one of our favorite features in this camper, which is unique to the flatbed model, is the underbed storage. There is quite a bit of room in here. As you can see, we put a lot of stuff. We still have plenty of open room, but we love it. And one change we made was to add a little push button light. When it's dark, it's really easy to find stuff in here using this. And we also went with stronger struts because on the bed, we like to put a mattress topper. Just makes it so much more comfortable. So these struts help keep the bed up with that extra weight. Now to give you an idea of headspace in here, I am 5'11". And there's more than enough room for me. Now the bed. Now there's also plenty of room for me to sleep side to side. And we've been in vans for so long. I kind of forgot what it was like to sleep in a bed and not have your feet hit the opposite side wall. But there's plenty of room here, room at my feet for me to stretch out. And it's really comfortable. All right, I got to straighten this out because I'm never one to make a bed. That's always Kate's duty. And she's gonna kill me because I just screwed up her bed. <laughs> anyway, above the bed, we have a vent. There is an option for an extra fan up there, but we really didn't feel like we needed it. We have another fan up front above the galley area. Now you might be wondering what this bar is. Well, when you're sleeping, you can actually use it as a little nightstand. So I like to stick my phone up here or other things. Um, but the purpose of it is to help you get the top up and down. Let me show you. So to bring it down, just pull. 
and the whole roof comes down. To get it up, push, locks into place, and that's it. Now, I always sleep on the outside of the bed. Kate sleeps on the inside. It doesn't really bother me when she has to crawl over me in the middle of the night or in the morning. We've just been in vans for so long, we've gotten very used to this configuration. But as I mentioned, if that's not something that you're into, you can always get the, the king option, excuse me, and sleep front to back so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I mentioned the bathroom. Yes, we have a bathroom in here. In here is where they normally install the cassette toilet. We had them build the box without the cassette toilet because we bring our own. So this is the Thetford Curve. We like it because it has a five and a half gallon capacity and we can bolt it into the floor so it's mounted, it's not going anywhere. It's also nice because if we have to empty it from the outside, we can reach in and grab it without having to come into the camper. Another interesting feature that we've gotten a lot of questions about is Yes, I can use this when the top is down. So the top comes to about here. It just clears my head. But if you had to, you're taller, you could squat down a little bit. But if we're going down the road, you can use a toilet. You can access everything in the camper minus the storage under the bed. The other nice thing is this cushion here is a nice little bench seat. Um, it's also a nice step up into the bed. But again, when the top is down, you can sit here. And what I like to do is come in, make a cup of coffee. I can set up all my coffee stuff in here or on this little platform. And then we get right back on the road. While I'm sitting here, let's talk power. We have three 120 watt outlets in the camper. One is right here by the kitchen. We use this for the Instant Pot, all of my coffee making gear and whatnot. There's another one down here. They're run by a 2000 watt PureSign inverter. All of that is powered by 300 amp hour lithium batteries. These are made by Battleborn and they power everything in this rig and so far, we haven't had any power issues. I think this is more than we actually need on a daily basis because we have 260 watt solar panels on the roof. The batteries are also tied into the truck itself. So we're charging when we're going down the road. And when we're camped someplace long term and we have good sunlight, we have an external 120 watt solar panel. So we get more than enough energy coming back into these bad boys. Down here are the brains of the operation. In this cabinet, we have the Red Arc Manager 30. This manages all power management in the camper. Behind that, there is a 20 gallon fresh water tank. In the tray itself, we also have an auxiliary 43 liter water tank. A lot of people have asked if we have a pass through into the truck. We do not. All we have is this window with a privacy curtain. One thing that we installed are these l tracks We've put this in various places around the camper. They're cool because there are all sorts of attachments for them. And we're using bungee cords, various things to keep things attached while we're going down a bumpy road. There's a storage cabinet here. Now, one thing I don't like about this is with the optional cushion, you can't open this without moving the cushion out of the way. Now, this area down here is a nice big storage area under the sink. It also gives you easy access to the water pump should that go out. You also have access to the hot water heater as well as all the water lines and fittings. So when you need to empty the tank or winterize, you can do that all through here. There's another storage cabinet right here. I put all of my coffee gear and the nice thing about this is it's actually quite deep. So you can fit a lot in there. This is the control for our water pump. It also shows our fresh water tank level, which is currently empty because it's been freezing here and we had to winterize the rig. This is the control for the hot water heater, the control for the gas furnace. If you're wondering what the little minion band-aid is on there, I did this because what's really cool about this control, we've done a lot of camping and freezing temperatures. And when you're in bed, you can crank this up all the way 
heat the camper. And then when you're ready to fall asleep, all I have to do is look over and I just move this to the mark that I set there. And that's what we leave it at for our nighttime temperature to keep the camper warm while we're sleeping. The heat itself comes out down here. There's a simple little vent that you can turn around to kind of aim the air. And it does a fairly good job. This keeps the camper toasty warm. Above the controls, we have a drawer, nice sized, and it also gets latched in here so it can't come out while we're going down the road. This is the control panel for the Red Arc. If I scroll through, it'll show me my battery charge, how much solar shore power or engine power is coming into the system, how many amps are coming in or going out. So if we turn on a bunch of loads in the camper, we can actually see that through the system and it'll give us an estimate as to how long we can run all of that with our current uh, battery setup. And then there's just a general menu. Condensation can be an issue in any camper, more so when you have a pop top. The reason for this is the people inside are breathing, producing water vapor. Uh, if I'm making coffee and boiling water, that produces a lot of humidity. So to help combat that, we installed this little monitor by EvaDry. It shows the percentage humidity as well as the temperature in here. So we can watch to see when the humidity in here is getting a little high. If it does, we have this mini dehumidifier also by EvaDry. We can either plug it into the 120 outlet or 12 volt outlet and just run that to help bring the humidity level down. Everyone's been asking if we brought our Berkey along. Yes, we did. Gets stored under the dinette. When we want to use it, we just lift it, put it up on the sink or somewhere else in the camper. For the kitchen itself, we got the flush mounted sink and two burner gas stove. Below the stove, we have an 85 liter isotherm refrigerator, has plenty of room for all of our stuff as well as a small freezer. And one of the reasons we decided not to go with a larger refrigerator is because we really like this storage underneath the fridge. We keep some of our cast iron in here along with various food items and whatnot. So this is nice to have. The more storage you can have in a small space, the better. All right, let's move to the other side of the camper. I kind of feel like this is the kitchen area and this is the living room. I know it's not much, but it's ours. So this is the dinette, perfect for having dinner. We use it a lot for working. We love the fact that this table can move back and forth, especially if you're sitting there, it's much easier to get out. The table will also go up and down, or you can remove the table completely. One of the reasons to remove the table completely is that you can take it out, put it down here as a base, slide the cushions in, and now you have another bed. One nice thing about this bed is it's just as long as the full-size bed we have, plus you can use it when the top is down. So if for some reason you can't put the top up, you can still sleep here in the dinette. Or if you're bringing friends or family along, have them sleep here. Personally, I'd put them outside in a tent, but that's just me. That said, when the table's out, you can also use this area as a shower. Up above, these little black hooks all around, that's where you attach the shower curtain. That black hook is where you attach the, uh, the shower nozzle, hose, whatever you want to call it. And that gets plugged in down here. So that's the hot cold water outlet. You just twist it to kind of set your temperature. And then this down here is the water basin. So all of the water kind of funnels down. You stick the curtain underneath that little step there and it goes right into the gray tank. On both sides of the dinette, you have these windows. They are partially covered, but you can still stick stuff back here for a little extra storage. The windows open, they all have these curtains. Big window in the back, I apologize, it's a bit dirty, but we've been doing a lot of driving lately. Uh, again, curtains that go across, you have Velcro so that they clip together and 
it actually keeps quite a bit of light out, so that's never really a concern for us. Underneath both the sides of the dinette, so by lifting up the cushion, I access a big storage area here underneath. I put all my clothes and everything here. Kate uses the other side. Another nice thing about having the flatbed model is this goes all the way down to the floor. So as you can see, I haven't even filled it up. There's plenty of space in there. Down below, we've installed l tracks here. This is where we hold our Berkey. So what we do is when we're driving, because there's a drain here, just in case the Berkey spills, water will go into the drain. It sits up here and we have a bungee cord that comes around to hold it in place. I also put my coffee grinder here. Over here, more L tracks. As you can see, we're just randomly hanging things. Coming a little further back, here is where our 12 volt outlet is. We have two USB outlets. This will show our battery voltage, 120 outlet, all the exterior and one interior light. And then this is the on off switch for the 2000 watt pure sign inverter, which I actually forgot to show you. So lift this up again. The 2000 watt inverter is right there. There are a couple more things to show you in the camper before we continue outside. For lighting inside of the camper, there are four of these LED light strips. You just tap them to go on and then to make them brighter or dimmer, you just hold your finger on them. Around the camper, we have the thermal pack. This is an extra layer of insulation to really help in the cold or heat. To access the windows, just pull that down. And this is the outer material. There are four windows around the camper. Pull this down, you can now see outside and there's this clear plastic here to keep any air from coming in. If you do want to breeze, Pull that down and now you have a bug screen to keep the bugs out, but you get the breeze in. One thing we've noticed with these windows and the top in general is we've been in a few thunderstorms and so far we haven't had any water or that coming in. What we found is as long as you put these up and kind of seal this well, you won't get any water coming in. That's not to say it can't happen, it just hasn't happened to us yet. Coming outside, We've got a screen door, another curtain for the window on the door. One feature we really like about the flatbed camper is that the entry door is on the side rather than in the back. The reason for that is we can tow things or I can bring my motorcycle along and still be able to get in and out of the camper without any blockages. That said, there are two ways or actually three ways for us to get in this camper. First are these stairs. These just extend out, push in, we clip them in, and then when we're not using them, we throw them in the truck. The other is we can just step up onto the tire into the camper, or we have this giant beer can opener looking thing. Slides into the tray. There's actually a couple of spots over here next to the door, but we can use this as a stirrup step to get into the camper. The nice thing about this is if we are in a parking lot or some place where we can't extend the stairs all the way, we can just throw this on and easily get in and out of the camper. We have dual propane tanks. Those are both located in here. Up here, we had these steps mounted so that if we ever need to, we can get up onto the roof. But more than anything, we use these to, let's say, hang a wet towel or something else to stay dry. If you wanted to, you could hang a hammock from here over to a tree. Along the top, we have a Fiamma manual crank awning, LED lights, and then this little, nice little outdoor light. This is great when we're parked somewhere at night. Uh, this light doesn't attract the bugs, but it's enough for us to see our keys to get in the door. If we wanted to take the camper off, there are mounts on the four points of the camper for us to put jacks to bring it off. But that said, since we don't have the jacks, we decided to mount this optional rack on the back. Right now, we're not using it for anything, but a lot of people put on spare fuel cans, max tracks, or other gear back here that they don't necessarily want in the camper or in the cab of the truck. 
We also opted for two floodlights on the back of the camper. These are great if you have to back in somewhere at night and you need the extra light, or if you're out in the forest and you wanna see what's around you. And they're so nice, I actually wish we had put some on the side of the camper as well. Maybe in a future update to the camper we do. We will be making another video in the future about all the mods and upgrades we've decided to make to this camper. So stay tuned for that. On the driver's side, we have another LED strip. This is where we can hook up our city water or fill our 20 gallon freshwater tank. Back here is actually the fill for our 43 liter auxiliary tank that's underneath the camper. Shore power, vent for the fridge. There's also a secondary fan back here that you can turn on. So if you're camping in really hot weather, this fan will help circulate air to keep the refrigerator cooler. Behind here is the hot water heater, furnace, outlet for an outdoor shower, and this is the gray water for the shower itself. Now we have a little bag that we can set up. I think it holds about five gallons. With a hose, you just attach to this and all the gray water goes into that bag and then you can dump it out. We've also built a permanent gray water tank for the sink itself. Let me show you that. So I designed and built a gray water tank that runs from front to back underneath this flatbed. What I used was a long length of four inch ABS pipe with some fittings to fit a blade valve on here. Nice thing with this blade valve is it has a cover so I can attach a hose to run to a sewer connection. Uh, but again, this runs from front to back. The sink drains down through the camper and the tray. There's a hole there and it's been working really well. It's nice for full timers like us so we don't have to set up an outside gray tank whenever we want to use the sink. We've mounted the camper on a Norweld tray. This is their seven foot deluxe weekender with the boxes. So all of these boxes are mounted to the underside of the tray. You can move them around or remove them if you have to. They all have locks on them with covers to keep the dust out. They all have seals around the edges. And then this one is a smaller one because we have our fuel fill back here. On this side, this is a bit larger. This is where I keep all of our camping supplies and water hose, that sort of thing. Now my favorite feature of the tray is this slide out storage. This is where we keep our 120 watt portable solar panel along with a lot of other camping gear. The Norweld tray itself has LED lighting built into it that they've wired into our truck. Now, a lot of people have asked why the camper is kind of built this way and why there's this extra lip here. The camper was originally designed for a bit of a shorter tray. They also have a longer model that would sit further back. Some people have mounted their camper further back to put a storage box between the cab of the truck and the camper. We decided to leave it this way. One reason is just to keep things shorter overall, but also we like having this as a step. So what Kate does is when she's climbing up to latch the roof, she steps up here and then puts her foot here so she can latch the roof. While it may look a little strange, it's really useful for us. On the passenger side, there's another storage box there on the rear and another storage box here. The Norweld is an all aluminum tray, which means weight is a lot less than some of the steel trays out there. I mentioned earlier, there is a 43 liter auxiliary water tank that is back here underneath the tray. The outlet for that is right here. So that is it for the walkthrough. Starting price on the Hawk is just under $30,000 and options go up from there. If you would like to see all of the options we chose and the features of this Overland truck camper, head over to our website at wertherussos.com. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and head over to Instagram and find us there. Kate's been trying to build that audience as much as possible. We've got some cool stuff going over there at Russos. Thank you guys so much.